You're listening to Between the Barrels, where we talk to the industry's best on all things barrel racing. I'm Madeline Green, and we are keeping it Between the Barrels. everyone. Welcome to Between the Barrels. This is your host, Madeline Green. I hope you all are enjoying your week. I know that I am. And joining me on the show today is Sharon Hall. Sharon is the 2017 Futurity Champion of the BBR World Finals that just took place in Oklahoma City. Hey, Sharon, how are you doing? I'm happy, blessed, and fortunate. Good. So has everything kind of slowed down since the BBR? I know you said you were on a plane for a while, so you seem kind of (laughs) busy. Absolutely, all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Well, congratulations on your Futurity Championship at the BBR World Finals. Thank you. But before we get into that, talk a little bit about that storm that came through out there. How bad was that? Well... Wow. That's all I can say. I don't think anybody was expecting, you know, that to happen, of course. Um, but good old Oklahoma weather, you just never know. Yeah, yeah. It's warm one day and cold the next. And But uh, actually, I live about 35 miles east of Oklahoma City. Uh-huh. And so um, I drive back and forth. And well, fortunate for me that the weather, you know, we got a lot of rain and everything, but we didn't get, you know, the, the wind damage or anything where I live. Well, that's compared good. to the fairgrounds. So. Yeah. Well, back to you and Dreaming of Foose. Kind of talk about your runs at the BBR a little bit. Okay. Well, um, I personally like Barn 8. Good job with, uh, you know, the ground. And it was very consistent and safe. And um, actually, you know, my first run, I just uh, wanted to just make a solid run. Yeah. Um, and just wherever she fell, she fell. And, um, you know, fortunate enough, it was good enough for second with that 15704. Very, very thankful. Yeah, yeah. And you also did good on her at the Patriot Fraturity. How did you get your hands on her? Um, well, thank you. Yes, she she had a clean sweep there. Yeah. Um, I had, the story is I bought her. I was looking for a two-year-old two, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, and um, I wanted – um, I wanted something so fast that if they made a mistake, it, they're still going to clock. Mm-hmm. I was on actually Barrel Horse World, I think, and she popped up and I bought her sight unseen off of her picture. Oh, wow. And out of California and she was unbroke and they said they didn't race her um, because she was just a little bit too small. Yeah. So they hadn't broke her yet or anything, and they were kind of downsizing. So I went ahead and bought her and couldn't find a ride back for her. <laughs> um, so I said, well, while she's out there, I might as well try to find somebody that can get her broke. So mm-hmm. I got a referral, and um, Devin went and picked her up, broke her for me for 60 days, and he was making a trip to Oklahoma to haul some other horses and ended up bringing her home for me and it just was great yeah kind of she has a great story yeah that is a pretty cool story yes talk a little bit about how you got involved in barrel racing i know that your mom rode western pleasure so why barrel racing my dad actually got into barrel racing um through my mom Mm -hmm. um i he actually was a mechanic so he started out uh working on motorcycles and actually invented uh welding the frame or welding the gas tank to the frame on the ah. Harley. And so he used to rebuild parts, and uh, the Hells Angels used to shipping parts, <laughs> and he would rebuild them, and then he'd mail them back. So he was he was just kind of a genius. At yeah. Whatever he did. And I think his cool. need for speed went from motorcycle cars to motorcycles to horses. Yeah. That and so nice. that's how I got into that racing. Awesome. And you put on the Jackson Hall Memorial Barrel Race in honor of your dad. Kind of talk about the impact he had on you and your career in barrel racing. Oh, well, him and my mother both equally had an impact on my life. But um, <clears throat> my dad, you know, he, he has this determination that mm-hmm. was handed down to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started, I started that memorial race in honor of him. And 
the whole basis of the to give back to the contestants with low entry fees and good payouts. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to give back to the sponsors because without either of those, you can't have an event. And so we take pride in uh, marketing and promoting our sponsors. And, you know, in return, you know, we get we get great numbers yeah. at, the, at the events talk about your training some what do you feel like is most important to focus on when training a barrel horse uh relaxation mm-hmm. um I, I i try to never allow my horses to get anxiety and get to the point where they become nervous anxious or afraid mm-hmm. um so that's probably key for me and <laughs> you have to have a lot of patience yes. to do that <laughs> and so um i've developed a lot of that through the years <laughs> you learn from experience you know, what not to do, what to do, and then mm-hmm. when to do it. Yeah. So. And what advice would you give a young trainer kind of just getting started in the business? Go learn and study from someone uh, you admire, mm-hmm. their style, their technique. I didn't have that opportunity, so I had to fumble my way through. And <laughs> I study and watch. Mm-hmm. I study and watch a lot of people and a lot of winners. And, um, you know, you just end up developing developing your own style over a period of time yeah and you know you get experience with the more horses you get to ride the different styles um of course we always want to put our style into the horse but really a good trainer will adapt to the horse's style as well yes yes definitely now you are very much a woman of faith so how has that kind of helped you and affected the way that you compete and live your life everything (laughs) everything to me um i've i've you know come to the conclusion that i can do nothing within myself it's through the strength of him Mm -hmm. and that's what gets me through every day that's what gets me through you know the hard times that's what gets you through the lows yeah through the losses through the heartache you just at the end of the day you know we're here just for a short time yeah and i like you got to live your life like it's the last and be the inspiration to others because that's what it's all about you know we're here to just share the good news Mm -hmm. and if if we're not doing that then how are others going to make it too yeah so at the end of the day I know where I'm going when I'm gone and that's the most important thing and that's almost like a joy yeah you know knowing that you know at the end of my life I want I hope I've made a difference and 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 looking forward to where I'm going and who I'm going to spend the rest of my life with yeah yeah that's awesome what would you consider your greatest accomplishment in the sport of barrel racing wow I would (laughs) have to say Making a winner year after year after year. Mm-hmm. Not everyone gets the opportunity to climb on those great horses, and then not everybody has the ability to get them to the top. And I feel very blessed and fortunate that I have done that multiple times. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that like in a boisterous way at all. <laughs> I just know how fortunate, you know, I am to, to have been able to do that. Yeah, of course. Um, and as far as like, wins you know you know winning a slot race is huge winning titles at fraturities you know are huge for me um derbies as well i mean just to be you know successful in that area and that arena is is in itself a huge accomplishment yeah and what do you still kind of hope to achieve i mean it seems like every barrel racer's dream is to go to the nfr um <laughs> you know i mean i would i would love to put that on my resume once yes <laughs> I, I mean i just i just know if i was out on the road for a couple two three years you know i'd i'd be dragging colts along because i just <laughs> the train you know I like to make something into something yeah take something from knowing nothing or picking one out and then you know developing it into a winner that is like the biggest challenge for me yeah um but as far as like the only thing I haven't accomplished would probably be you know qualifying for the NFR yeah yeah so that would probably be a goal just to do once um definitely God's will, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm happy where I'm at, and I just try to <clears throat> do what he wants me to do. Yeah. So what's next up for you? What's the next big thing? Fort Smith. Yeah. That's kind of like 
the end of the, you know, first half of the season run, you know? Yeah, so yeah. That's kind of like a big finale for, for the season right now. Oh, yeah. And then kind of get to rest a little bit this summer and really work on your three-year-olds and, you know, just the same old routine. <laughs> mm-hmm. And how many are you taking to Fort Smith? I have three in the Futurity this year. Awesome. I just got jump. I just jump jockeyed one at the BBR, and she placed the first round and got an average. So, of course, they're like, can you go to Fort <laughs> Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, and um, we wish you good luck at Fort Smith and hopefully the storms won't follow you out there. <laughs> no, I pray too. So. Every, every time I go out there, there's always tornadoes. <laughs> well, I pray not. <laughs> I no hope not more. either. Well, good luck. Well, thank you. And just a quick note on the end, you know, I'd like to just um, thank my sponsors. Yeah. I don't know if they really, you know, help me stay in the winter circle, honestly. Yeah. From, you know, MVP supplements to um, sponsored by M Bar Two. Uh huh. They supply my cloud boots. They also supply me in uh, back on track products. And if you give them like my code, you can get ten percent off. Oh, cool. Then I'm sponsored by Blue Bonnet Feeds, mm-hmm. and my horses look amazing. And I've just never had a feed that creates a top line like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thankful for for them. Um, I'm also sponsored by Chaffe Hay, and that's like a hay in a bag and it's basically yeah it's really cool and i feed that daily and then when i'm on the road it just it gives them everything as if they all the minerals and vitamins that they need as if they were like just out on the range yeah so pretty cool do you feed regular hay with it or is that oh yeah oh yeah yeah Okay. Yeah, I just kind of supplement with that. But it is a form of hay that a horse could live on. Yeah. And then PHT mm-hmm. products, you know, the magnets, love their stuff. It's great therapy. Um, and then I'm also sponsored by Hides USA. And so I love my suits. And um, also uh, Krager Shavings, C-R-I-G-E-R Shavings. And um, they're out of Oklahoma. And then Magna Wave, Oklahoma. And she does therapy on my horses. Well, that is all for the show tonight. Thanks for listening. I'm Madeline Green, and until next week, enjoy this week.